Welcome everybody, my name is Colton from Zim2 Capital and today I'm here with the Principal Geologist and CEO of Aeonian Resources, Andy Randall. Andy, thanks for coming in. It's been a while since we've spoken. Actually, I don't think we've spoken with you directly either, so great to have you here. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. So Aeonian Resources is still a private company, but there's a lot in the works. Uh, maybe you can just give our viewers a little bit of a rundown about the company because it's been a while since we've heard from the company. Yeah, so Aeonian is, uh, we're kind of trying to be an aspirational exploration company, um, taking a lot of the lessons that I've learned through my career so far uh, and you know my background in geology but also with my workings with like AME the different regional groups First Nations groups etc and just trying to bring like all the best practices that I've learned together through my consulting company into a public company mm. so obviously the first step with that is becoming a private company and then uh, and finding the right project so um, Aeonian is built on uh, these kind of uh, aspirational pillars uh, as we would say where we're trying to balance between the science so we get we de-risk a project very early on as much mm -hmm. as we can but also the community involvement first nations involvement environmental etc so uh we've got different like economic models that we're following um as well as different geological models so it's quite a quite an interesting combination that we're bringing to the table here yeah and i remember when i first ran into you guys and looking at the website it all it goes into the history of the area and all those foundations you just mentioned and i think that's kind of a brush of uh, a fresh uh, fresh air for <laughs> yeah, yeah. for people to see uh, in this in this industry so well and it's right you know I mean we're kind of entering an age as well where we're trying to attract different investors from different backgrounds so you know not everybody is sophisticated I'm certainly not like you know kind of uh, learning the investment jargon is kind of over my head a lot of the time yeah. but you know in the same way that some people won't understand the geology so we're trying to make it as plain English as possible mm -hmm. um, and as visual and as interactive on the website as well so that people can kind of guide their own way through it learn about it so it doesn't matter if you're a highly technical person and you want to look at what our grades are or if you're just somebody that's like maybe you have a concern about the wildlife in that area right that we've at least acknowledged and researched that and we've put that out there yeah that i think that's so great and and so okay so your company the project is based in southern bc ish yeah so we're in southeast bc mm -hmm. the, the the project's called kukanusa mm -hmm. Uh, which is short for Kootenai Canada USA, um, partly because the lake that's yeah. in the area spans the border there, but also the geology that we're researching spans the border. Mm. So uh, the project is located about 45 minutes south of Cranbrook by road. Um, and what we're looking for specifically is sedimentary copper. And the rocks in this area are very, very old. They're about one and a half billion years old. Uh, so some of the oldest rocks in Canada, let, yeah. alone, let alone BC. Um, and we're in an area called the Purcell Basin. And the rocks in this area go from uh, kind of like the radium area, golden area, mm -hmm. right the way down into the States, into Montana, Missoula area right. down there. So we're chasing the lithologies that in the States have been mined for sedimentary copper, mm -hmm. but hasn't been explored in Canada. Um, so it's a kind of a, we're taking something that is a fairly well-known concept mm -hmm. elsewhere. Mm -hmm. We forget a lot of the time that geology doesn't care about the borders. It's going to keep on going. Right. And so we're, we're poking around in this area to, to see what we can find. And you were speaking just earlier prior to this about how large the property is, too. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, with sedimentary copper, uh, you know, plays, you have to kind of think big and work your way down from there. Um, but also this area is very, very open. There's not a lot of claim staking in the area at all. So it's allowed us to grow the property. And right now we're just a shade under 300 square kilometers, Yeah, which is vast. Very large. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So you did do some work in the past month or two here. Maybe you can go over that, that work that was done. Yeah, sure. So um, we... Uh, I, we've got some very smart people on our board uh, that kind of realized that we could do, as a private company, a little uh, flow-through raise. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to do that to support the work, to keep growing the project and keep generating news and ideas, but also to understand the potential. Uh, so what we did this summer, um, just in the last two months, was uh, the initial thing was a drone magnetic survey. Um, so we went out. We have about 11 targets that we know of on the property. Mm -hmm. uh, we flew seven of them. We're still going through the results and trying to work out what they mean, but three of them have shown um, some really good potential where the copper is uh, is is sat with the mag highs that we're seeing in this uh, this area. So we've generated a lot of new targets because we've got a lot of mag highs that people haven't been out to before. Three hundred square kilometers is a big area to mm -hmm. to walk around. Yeah. Um, but more interestingly is that we've actually found folds in the system now. Sedimentary copper, a lot of people get scared of, as I found, because it's uh, you have to look at it more like an oil and gas project. Right, right. You need fluid, you need traps, that kind of thing. 
And so what we found is uh, we've, we found these uh, folding systems that actually seem to be enriched in the copper. And you know the analogous deposits in the south in Montana have the same kind of trap systems as well. Right. So we find that the grades will go up, and that we'll have those kind of little pods that become hopefully the mineable areas. Yeah. Um, so then, yeah. So moving forward now, that mag survey was done. Now, what is? The, have you identified some drill targets for the upcoming season then, or? Yeah. So we um, we've just had a crew just finish out doing ten days mapping. We decided just to bite the bullet sure. and get some people out there this year. Um, and follow up on those other mag highs that we see because we need more structure information. We need more dips and strikes. You know all the things that we need to be able to plan right. the um, the the uh, the program. The other thing that we need to do as well is work out our road network. Now, Kuka needs some you know three hundred square kilometers. Within that three hundred square kilometers, we've got about seven hundred kilometers of road network. Oh wow! That's all drivable, pretty much ninety yeah. percent of it's drivable by an F one hundred and fifty. Yeah, and I've seen some pictures of you just off the side of the road, <laughs> yeah. right there, just cracking just right rocks, there, cracking rocks. Open. Open. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so this time we went back. We took a couple of ATVs in with us and stuff, so we get yeah. other places. So we've been mapping the roads as well. So we've got a better idea of the infrastructure. Uh, the waterways, etc., that we can use. So we are in the process of applying for a permit, mm -hmm. and that information is super valuable for that. So it helps expedite the, the because we've gone out, done the research, yeah. Um, and we know now that we've got, as I say, there's two areas that we're particularly interested in that we think we could drill, you know, right away. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We can see the dip. We can see the projection of the uh, through the magnetic surveys of these things extending for at least 200 meters underground. Wow. But then above ground, maybe like a 300 meter vertical um, extent as mm -hmm. well through the lithology. So, you know, the the particular unit that we're looking at, the lithology we're looking at, is about 1,100 meters thick. We've identified maybe about 500 meters of that as being potential mineralized as well. So again, a really good concept there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a really great start uh, for the company, and so. Moving towards something a little bit different, you did join the Service Alliance of Companies, and I'm interested to hear about what the benefits of that are for Aeonian and, and why you guys joined. Yeah, so um, we were approached, uh, it was quite an honor actually to be approached by the Service Alliance. They uh, they recognized um, the work that we're doing and that kind of slightly different take on exploration yeah. and the way that we've set things up very early. Um, so I think there was part of it wanting to learn from us, mm. which is very honorable but yeah, once absolutely. you once you learn about the groups that are in there you know there's ai technology there's um other kind of consulting groups as well it also means that we've got expertise on different companies from across europe australia mm. and north america that now can start to look at this and get involved and maybe right. give us some ideas so mm -hmm. it's uh, it's a it's a good meeting of minds but it also nice for the future where we might be able to bring in some additional technology some of this technology comes with grants even though it's in a foreign country right. that would actually pay for part of the exploration work so wow. yeah it's a good it's a good good meeting yeah that's a great addition and so you're like i said earlier you're still a private company but there are plans to go public you are in that process and and what can shareholders expect on that front yeah absolutely so um we're actually just completing our second 43101 for okay. this we did one in 2021 uh, we were a little bit, we've done a lot of work since then, right. so we yeah. needed to kind of update it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we want to make sure that everything's on the table so that when we're going through our listing process, we're not hiding anything. Yeah. People can buy, get involved, whatever, based on that information. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we've got that uh, 43101 will be done. Now we finish the field work, probably in the next two weeks. Okay. We've got one more site visit to go and then mm -hmm. we're done. Um, We've got our lawyers lined up. We've got cash in the bank. Uh, we've got enough to kind of go through the listing process. We've chosen right now to pursue the CSE mm -hmm. for the listing. Yep. Um, this is just path of least resistance yep. right now. You know, let's let's do that. Let's get out there and, and start the journey. Mm -hmm. So yeah, things are uh, things will you'll see like uh, probably some news coming out through us on our website okay. um, in the next couple of weeks. Just follow up on the the surveys. Mm -hmm. It might go a little bit quiet. Sure. Um, but what I would urge people is definitely keep an eye on the website. We do quarterly investor updates and quarterly community updates mm -hmm. as well that are, are basically a flip book on the website. And so we'll keep doing those through the quiet period while the listing's going on in the background and right. be able to keep people informed that way. Yeah, and I will suggest people do check out the website. There's lots of valuable information and the social media accounts has lots of educational stuff as well. So this is a company to follow for sure and uh, we'll keep everybody updated. Is there anything else you wanted to update shareholders on? 
No, I, I just, uh, you know, we thank everybody for support. And, you know, I, I'm kind of new to this as a CEO role. Sure. It's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm used to being on the other side of the table talking yeah. the, the geology and everything. So I've really enjoyed meeting the shareholders that we've got and working with people because I'm learning so much from them as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, so this is a really good opportunity to get involved with the company. Actually, you have to be listened to as a yeah. shareholder. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. No, well, we're excited. And like I said, we'll keep everybody updated as much as we can. So thanks, Andy, for coming in. And we'll talk soon. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers.